another fun day Friday with Crafty Cousins. What are we up to today? Stick around and we'll find out. Hey y'all, it's Trish. Kay and I received a message from one of our subscribers asking us if we would do a set of angel wings. She explained that she had lost her husband and that the wings had taken on a special meaning for her, so of course we wanted to give it a shot. The first thing I did was take a piece of paper and sketch out a wing. Once I had it where I liked it, I cut it out and then traced that onto a piece of foam board. I flipped it over and traced it in mirror image so that I would have a set. Now I'm just going to take my Zacto knife and go around each wing and cut them out. I did have to go and change my blade. If you try cutting foam board with a dull blade, it catches and tears, but once I got a fresh blade, it did perfectly. I took a piece of sandpaper and just went around on and smoothed out any rough edges. I knew that I wanted to use crab sticks to make my wings so that they would look like a wood sculpture. Kay suggested that I use the shingles that you use whenever you're making a dollhouse. They sell those at Hobby Lobby in a big bag. And in the end, I decided not to because they're about $8 a bag. But I will tell you that after cutting all these little crab sticks, I wish I had. So if you're going to be making one of these, I can tell you that it's worth the little bit extra to go ahead and buy those shingles that are pre-cut. Now I just take my pieces, I use both ends of the craft stick and I start layering them onto my wing. As you go up, it makes a gap in between the wings and the foam board. So in the beginning, I would just take the little pieces from the middle of the stick and kind of stick them down under there to fill that gap. But then the gap got to be too big. So I started taking scrap pieces of the foam board and gluing it on just to build that up. Now, this is going to look like a mess on this first wing, but I promise you, stick around. I learned my lesson and I fixed it on the second wing. I just used a combination of the craft sticks and the foam board and just kept building it up until I had my craft sticks laying down and I honestly thought this looked like feathers laying on top of each other. Once I had my long feathers done, I wanted to be able to do something that would give me texture at the top that reminds you of those small feathers that angel wings have at the top. So I took some pine cones and I broke off the pieces and I used the little pointy piece as my texture. I just break them off and I kept gluing them on top of each other. Now these are sticky, so watch your fingers. And I also baked my pine cones in the oven to kill any little bugs that was in it, but I don't think I left them in there quite long enough because there was still a couple of ants that came out of the pine cones. So make sure you bake them for at least, I'd say, 10 minutes. As I filled up that area, I really loved the texture that the pine cone was giving me at the top of my wing. Here you see that I got a clue and I cut out some extra wings out of the foam board that I had left over. Now I can put down my little wooden pieces and then when I get to the point where I need to build it up, I can just mark the foam, cut it and glue it down and I don't have to deal with all those little pieces. It does take two of the craft sticks to equal the same width of the foam. So I did still use the little pieces that I was breaking off from the middle of the craft stick up under the first layer. And then after the second layer, I would put down another piece of foam board and then I would use the craft sticks and I kept going in that order until I had it built up the way I needed it to be. Once I got my wings finished, I needed to do something with those sides because you could see the mess that I had made building up the wing. 
So I took some of the caulk mastic that I got from the Dollar Tree and I would just squeeze it on and then use my finger to run it around the side. And I did leave it textured because I really liked how that looked. Now I'm just going to take my lighter and I ran it over the top of it really quick to melt those little glue strings that you get when you use hot glue. After all of that was finished, I took some white chalk paint and I went over both wings, painting them real well. I made sure that I got in the little cracks of the wings. And then at the top, I took the brush and kind of spounced it on so that I got in between all the little nooks and crannies that my pine cone made. The caulk is actually white, but it was a different color white than what I was using in the chalk paint. So I actually went around that too and gave it a good coat so that it would all match. I did want to distress this a little bit. I didn't want to leave it a solid white. So I went to my old go-to and I took an old eyeshadow palette and a stencil brush and started brushing it on. And I was getting a slight bit of distressing on it, but not as much as I wanted. So I ended up taking one of the furniture repair markers and I would rub it against my brush and then rub it onto the wings. And between it and the eyeshadow, I got exactly the look that I was wanting. I have this palette board that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet that I'm going to use to mount my wings on. I got as much of the plastic off the back as I could and I cut off the twine and then I just glued my wings down to the front of the palette board with my hot glue. I wanted to distress my board a little bit too, so I took my white Waverly chalk paint and my stenciling brush and just did a little dry brush effect over it to highlight some of the boards. I want to make a shabby chic flower to go in the middle of my wings. So I took my burlap and pulled the string out to give me a cutting line. And then I took some lace I had on hand and cut it to the same width as my burlap. I wrapped the pieces around my hand just to give it a loop. You can see it over in the left hand side. I'm sorry that I was out of camera range, but once I got my loop, I just kind of gathered it up in the middle and put a rubber band around it. And then I take my scissors and I cut those ends to open it up. And then once I get that done, I take the scissors and just start whacking at it. There's no rhyme or reason. I just kind of cut at it to give it that shabby look. And the more you cut, it's going to open up like a flower. And then I just kept pulling at it and trimming it to kind of round it up until it looks somewhat like a flower. Now I'm going to do my burlap the same way. You can see that I'm wrapping the rubber band around the center of it. And then I take my scissors and cut open the ends. And then I just start cutting on it. Burlap does this cool thing when you cut on it. It actually starts falling apart. And I really like that. So you can see that I pulled on it with my fingers and big chunks of it fell out. And it really started looking rough and had that shabby look that I was wanting. Once I had them both ready, I just stacked them on top of each other and fluffed it a little more. And then I used my hot glue to glue them together. I took one of these, it's pearl with like some stones around it. It looks like a little flower. I get them from the wedding section at Hobby Lobby and I glued it into the middle of our flower just to give it a little bit of bling. I put it on my board and kind of fluffed it around just to get the look that I was looking for. And then I took some hot glue and attached it to my wings. And there's our set of angel wings. I am really happy with how these turned out. I'm not sure the camera does them justice, but when you are looking at them in person, they really look like a set of sculptured wings and I absolutely love them. I hope our subscriber does too. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring that bell so you'll be notified every time we upload new content. 
We upload five days a week, offering a variety of DIYs, paper crafting, home decor hauls, and craft show information. I'm sure you will find something you will love with Crafting Cousins. For this project, I'm going to be using one of the signs that I picked up from Hobby Lobby during their 90% off sale. I love getting these signs when they have those sales. This one was regular $19.99 and only paid $1.90 for it. They are really well made too. Unlike the Dollar Tree signs, you can't just push that back off. So I took a small screwdriver and pried up the staples as much as I could. And once I got them up a certain amount, then I just took my pliers and they pulled right out. When I removed the frame from the sign, it did tear the paper up some. So I peeled off as much of it as I could. And then I just took a piece of sandpaper and went over it and smoothed out all of those edges. I'm going to be using a dark picture for this sign, so I wanted my frame to really pop out. I took my white Waverly chalk paint and gave it a really good coat. I made sure I got the inside edges, the front of it, and all the outside edges. I'm going to be using a page out of this Shine Bright in All You Do calendar that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I really love this one that says Fall in Love and I thought it would be perfect for this sign. I'm going to take my Mod Podge and put a really generous coat on the front of the board. Then I just attach my sign to it. You do need to smooth it out and make sure you get all the wrinkles out. And I found that one of the best way to do this is to take a silicone spatula and smooth it out as you go. This keeps you from tearing your paper. Once my sign was in place, I just took some hot glue and attached the board back to the back of the frame. I didn't put staples back in it. I may want to trade it out at some point, so I just used hot glue to attach it back to it. I do want to put a little bow at the top, so I thought one of the little shabby bows would work out real well. I just took some of my ribbon that I had on hand and started playing with it. I like this burlap that I got from the Dollar General last year at Christmas, but I didn't like that red glitter edge to it. So I trimmed that off and then I cut that ribbon in half because I felt like it was really just too wide. Then I took some lace I had on hand and trimmed it up as well so that it would fit and a couple pieces of my small black and white check ribbon. I dovetailed my ends so that it would have more of a finished look and then I just stacked everything on top of each other until I liked how it looked. Now I just take it, pinch it in the center and use a piece of twine to tie it off in the middle. I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue on it to attach it to my frame. And then I used one of the small sunflowers that I got from the Dollar Tree and glued in the middle. And there's our sign. I really love this piece. I think it turned out great. And if I get tired of it later, I'll just change out the picture in the middle. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope that you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all. We would love to have you tune in all week from Made It Mondays, Tutorial Tuesdays, either hump day hauls or Wednesdays, trash to treasure Thursdays, and finish off the week with craft chat on Saturdays. See you tomorrow!